symbiosis is another example of interspecific interaction in one environment a uh, symbi symbiosis may do organisms which belong to two different species they have a long term relationship and they are living together or us uh, us long term relationship of living together in the same space uh, they they are providing benefit to each other or at least one party is getting the benefit if the other party is not getting the benefit so in isme uh, iske jo common example hai symbiosis mein uh, for example the the lichens jisse hum mostly jo hai wo familiar hain isme algae or fungal uh, fung fungi jo hain they are living together so algae is providing them the raw material for the food and fungi in return that is um, um, it's de decomposing the other materials and providing the nutrients which are in the form of nitrates and nitrates to द एलगी तो ये एक रिलेशनशिप जो है वो डिवेलप हो जाता है जिसमें दोनों मेम्बर्स विच आर कॉल्ड एज सिम्बियॉन्ट्स दे आर बेनिफिटिंग ईच अदर और एटलीस्ट वन पार्टी इज गेटिंग द बेनिफिट बेनिफिट्स की जो ये टाइप है इसमें सिम्बियॉन्ट्स जो हैं वो दो तरह के हो सकते हैं दे कुड बी ऑब्लीगेट और दे कुड बी फैकल्टेटिव ऑब्लीगेट सिम्बियॉन्ट्स वो दो मेम्बर्स हैं विच कांट लिव विदाउट ईच अदर फॉर एग्जाम्पल लाइकन के केस में फंजाई और एलगी की जो स्पीशीज हैं ये दूसरे के बगैर सर्वाइव नहीं कर सकती दे आर सो मच डिपेंडेंट फॉर देर सर्वाइवल ऑन ईच अदर फैकल्टेटिव के केस के अंदर देर इज पॉसिबिलिटी के इफ वन मेंबर या वन सिम्बियोट लीव द अदर वुड सम हाउ मैनेज टू सर्वाइव और इट वुड डिवेलप अ सिम्बियोटिक रिलेशनशिप विद एन अदर इंडिविजुअल अदर ग्रुप ऑफ स्पीशी अदर इंडिविजुअल ऑफ डिफरेंट स्पीशीज सो सिम्बियोसिस की सिम्बियॉन्ट्स की दो टाइप्स हैं और सिम्बियोसिस कैन बी डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री टाइप्स इट कुड बी म्यूचुअलिज्म कमेंसलिज्म पैरासिटिज्म सो फर्स्ट वी स्टडी द म्यूचुअलिज्म सो म्यूचुअलिज्म इज अ लॉन्ग टर्म रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन इंडिविजुअल्स ऑफ डिफरेंट स्पीशीज एंड इन दिस रिलेशनशिप दोनों सिम्बियॉन्ट्स जो हैं दे आर गेटिंग बेनिफिट फ्रॉम ईच अदर सो इट्स अ म्यूचुअल रिलेशनशिप बोथ आर गेटिंग a uh, similar extent of ya yeah, similar intensity of the benefit from each other so in this case uh, the both symbionts they could be obligate and or they could be facultative uh, one example of uh, a mutualistic behavior is hermit crab and sea anemone these are the marine animals and in this case hermit crab would carry the sea anemone and sea anemone is getting a free ride it is uh, because it's sedentary it can't move so once it is moving with the help of hermit crab uh, there are more opportunities more chances to get uh, the food from different places or in return hermit crab is uh, having those a uh, sea anemone which are protecting them the hermit crabs uh, with the help of their stinging tentacles against the predators of hermit crab let watch this video to understand this mutualistic behavior between hermit crab and this sea anemone called mutualism for example take this hermit crab she has a garden of small anemones on her shell that she carries everywhere she goes the anemones give her protection from predators like octopus because their stinging tentacles pack a punch But the anemones have a great life living on her shell because they gather some of the scraps from her messy eating and they travel around with her to the next meal. Since the hermit crab uses an old snail shell for a home, she needs to find a larger shell every once in a while as she grows. When she finds one, it's as simple as hopping out of the old shell and into the new one. But what to do about the anemones? The anemones are so important to the hermit crab that she must also move them to the new shell. Without them, she's defenseless. Slowly, with a combination of tapping on the anemones and peeling their edges, the hermit crab convinces them to release their grip. Only the crab knows how to coax the anemones into letting go. They will not submit to any other creature pulling on them. Once the anemone lets go of the old shell, the hermit crab deposits it on her new shell. She simply plops it in place and holds it until the anemone grabs on. The anemone will then crawl around on the shell and find a good spot all on its own, while the hermit crab turns her attention to working on the next anemone. इंटरेस्टिंग एग्जाम्पल ऑफ म्यूचुअलिस्टिक बिहेवियर जिसमें कि हर्मिट क्रैप जो है वो सी एन को 
फोर्स कर लेते हैं कि इट शुड बी शिफ्टेड द नेक्स्ट एग्जाम टाइप ऑफ सिम्बियोसिस इज कमेंसलिज्म इट इज ऑल्सो अ लॉन्ग टर्म रिलेशनशिप Uh, but in this type of relationship not both members they are getting the benefit rather only uh, one member is getting the benefit while the other member is neither benefited or harmed uh, iski example may uh, for example there are we are familiar with the barnacles barnacles they are attached to the body of uh, tortoise they are attached to the body of uh, um, the sharks and whales तो दैट इज एग्जाम्पल ऑफ फैकल्टेटिव सिम्बियोसिस के बाहर निकल को अगर एक होस्ट नहीं मिल रहा तो इट विल फाइंड एन अदर सिम्बियोन एन अदर ऑर्गेनिज्म सिमिलरली मोस्टली कमेंसलिज्म में एनिमल्स जो हैं वो एक फैकल्टेटिव बिहेवियर ही शो करते हैं द वन एग्जाम्पल हियर इन दिस लेक्चर इज रिलेशनशिप कमेंसलिज्म रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन रिमोरा फिश एंड शार्क्स सो लेट स्टडी हाउ द रिमोरा फिश दे आर गेटिंग अ फ्री राइड द फूड पार्टिकल्स from the sharks but the sharks they are getting no benefit no harm from the remora fish a remora is a fish with a suction cup on its head that allows it to stick to larger animals like sharks dolphins and turtles the remora survives by mooching food scraps and a free ride from its host they may provide some cleaning services to their host but for the most part they seem to be freeloaders This is definitely a symbiotic relationship, but it's really only good for one party. If the remora were to harm the host in some way, you would call it a parasite. If the remora merely helps itself without harming the host, then this would be called a commens. So that's how remora fish it gets uh, a free ride instead of spending its own energy on locomotion, on swimming, and then the, because the shark is eating. uh definitely on the prey so they will get the scraps of those leftovers which shark they left for the remora fish and they can feed on it but sharks they are getting no benefit for the remora fish that is example of commensalism the next type is parasitism parasite is a dangerous relationship because yahan par ek species is getting the benefit from its host but the other species is being harmed to so, uh, wo species जिस पर के दूसरी species ke members feed kar rahe hote hain ya usko utilize kar rahe hain that is called host and that individual which is harming its host is called the parasite so the parasite and host they have an intimate contact um parasites they could feed off their host they might kill or they might not kill the host dono situations jo hai wo ho sakti hain ki ek to wo sirf usko koi harm de rahe hain koi disease or infection cause kar rahe hain or in other form they would just kill it for example in this image we could see ke fishes they have uh, this parasite which is called the tang parasite aur ye tang parasite jo hai ye uski tang ko per feed kar raha hota hai aur usko completely digest kar leta hai aur uski jo bhi feed fish le rahi hoti hai us feed ke upar khud se usko consume karna shuru ho jata hai resultantly fish is not getting any feed but the parasite is developing but in that case they wouldn't kill the fish they would just make it weak and reduce its fitness but in this case on this caterpillar uh, the larvae of these insects they are feeding on the tissue of this caterpillar so they will consume the whole caterpillar as their food ultimately killing it these type of parasites are called as parasitoids in this case fitness jo hai wo sirf parasite hi ki enhance hoti hai usi ke hi survival ke chances opportunities increase kar jati hain us habitat ke andar but the host is losing its opportunity of being surviving or being successful in that habitat there might be possibility ki ek dangerous ya parasitoids ke case mein host ki puri population hi us habitat se eliminate ho jaye there are certain types of parasites um one are called as so first is microparasites microparasites they reproduce inside the host uh, for example all the bacteria and viruses they cause different types of diseases they feed on uh, their body tissues mostly the blood uh, or different cells so uh, these uh, micro uh, microparasites they are staying inside reproducing inside but the other group which is called the macroparasites they uh, release their juvenile from the host uh, for example trematodes hain ya usme tapeworms hain ye uh, us apne host ki body mein reproduce to karte hain uh, lekin apne juveniles ko uski body mein se release kar dete hain so could they, they could find other host and this type of infection or parasitism ki jo phenomenon hoga ye spread ho jayega ek se zyada hosts ke andar माइक्रोपेरासाइट और मैक्रोपेरासाइट्स के अलावा जो थर्ड टाइप है दैट इज एंडोपेरासाइट्स इस एंडोपेरासाइट्स द टाइप्स ऑफ पेरासाइट्स विच आर लिविंग इनसाइड द बॉडी ऑफ देयर होस्ट 
for example, liver fluke, for example, trypanosoma, and then there are tapeworms, different nematodes. They stay inside the body of the host. So, unki jo presence hai, unka location hai, inside the host hai, That's why they are called as endoparasites. Ectoparasites are those uh, types of parasites which are present on the body surface of their host. These are mostly fluid feeders. So, they feed on the blood or the secretions of their host. A uh, common example, just say I'm so familiar, hai, one is uh, the mosquito. The other ones are fleas and ticks, mites, lice, and they have a variety of hosts, including humans.